The next thing I want to show you, also very practical, very, very easy, are different ways to add color tints to your image. So I'm going to open up that one right there, close my panel. I'm going to zoom into the document a little bit by pressing Command or Control Plus. So let us say that you need to, you've got this image that you shot of Hawaii, but you really need to make it look vintage because it's going to go on the cover of Vintage Tiki Magazine. Well, you could add a color tint to that to make it look old, to give it a, 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 an aged feel. Of course, there are several different ways to add color tints in Photoshop, and we're going to look at a whole bunch of them, starting out with what I think is the easiest one known to man, which is the black and white adjustment layer. Now, adjustment layers are really handy because it's like you telling Photoshop, hey, Photoshop, this next change or adjustment that I'm going to ask you to make to my image, please put it on its own layer so it's in its own little space so you can change the opacity of the change that you made. You can throw it away if you decide you don't like it and so on and so forth. So adjustment layers I think are the best thing since sliced bread to be honest. So a super easy way to add a color tint to your image is to click to activate the image layer or just at the top of your layer stack if you're dealing with a multi-layer document. And let's trot down to the bottom of the layers panel to the half black, half white circle and choose black and white. Now depending upon what version of the program you've got, this, the options will either open in the properties panel or in CS6 it was called the adjustments panel or previously it would open in a dialog box, but they will open one way or the other. So not only can you use this technique to create a customizable black and white, you've got all these wonderful sliders here that you can use to change contrast, but you've also got a tint checkbox. So when we turn on the tint checkbox, we get the most popular tint known to the human race at this point, which is the sepia, which is just a fancy schmancy way of saying brown overlay. <laughs> <laughs> Now your next question will be, but Lisa, what if I don't want a brown overlay? No problem. Simply single click that little color swatch to the right of the checkbox. So give it a single click and up pops the color picker. From this point, you can use the vertical rainbow bar to tell Photoshop what range of colors you want to use for your color tint. So if I wanted something in the blue realm, I might stop there. And then you can use this box right here to tell Photoshop how light or how dark you want that particular color to be. So if I wanted a real subtle uh, blue tint to my image, which I like to do a lot to black and white, it just gives them a lot more depth and richness. So you can just keep clicking around until you get the right color. And that's it. And the cool thing is, when you save this as a Photoshop document, you know, you choose File, Save As, and pick Photoshop for the format, that adjustment layer is going to hang around forever. So if I decide, or if my client decides, eh, not so much on the blue, let's try a different color, all you have to do is pop open this document, double click the layer thumbnail of that layer, and those settings pop right back open. So it's non-destructive, and let's say, that you may like that blue, but it's a little too strong, I can come up here to the top of the layers panel and drop that layer opacity. So it's incredibly flexible, these adjustment layers. Uh, so I can just point my mouse cursor at the word opacity and it turns into a little scrubby bar so I can click and hold and then drag leftward to drop out some of that color. So now we're starting to get a little bit of an aged vintage look here. Another way to change the color, I'm going to go ahead and delete that one and that one, is to use what's called a color lookup adjustment layer. So a color lookup adjustment layer is really just a way for us to tell Photoshop, hey, take these colors and remap them according to this other creative color chart. So take a green and using whichever chart I pick, and there's oodles and gobs of presets in the program, then that green becomes this other color you know, whatever green is supposed to be on this other chart. This technique actually originated in the film business or movie business. So this adjustment layer was new in CS6. So if you're running CS5, you're not going to see it. So let's come down to the half black, half white circle at the bottom of the layers panel and choose color lookup. When you do, you get three pop-up menus of tons of choices. So let's just click the first one. These are all the different choices we have. Uh, for color tints. So really interesting stuff here. We'll just look at a, a couple of them. I can do a bleach bypass. Sorry if that blinded anybody. An edgy amber 
you know, so all kinds of wonderful stuff built into the program. You don't have to load these suckers, they're just sitting there waiting for you to use them. So feel free to trot through all three of them again Friday, Saturday night with your favorite beverage. So there's all different kinds of, of interesting looks. And you don't have to worry about turning one of them off. As soon as you uh, start messing around with the next pop-up menu down, the other one shuts itself off aut automatically. So you can't go wrong. Well, maybe that would be wrong, but <laughs> a little bit wrong. <laughs> but hey, whatever floats your boat, right? <laughs> So all kinds of fun with the color lookup adjustment layer again and we access that by clicking the half black half white circle at the bottom of our layers panel and choosing color lookup and again that came along in CS6 so if you're running CS5 you won't see that.